Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. I'm spending some time in the woods in this beautiful spring morning and I want to show you something that you might not be familiar with. It's a wild plant that you can eat and it requires no special preparation. So you could just eat it raw and treat it as a trailside nibble. Or you could bring it home and add it to whatever meals you are making. Now this plant has a really cool name. It has a tiny flower and it might just become your new favorite wild edible plant. This is false mermaid weed. And many people walk right over this plant and never see it. People see spring beauties, people see trout lilies, people see morels, but people walk right through and often directly on false mermaid weed, never even realizing that the plant is growing under their feet. So false mermaid weed is one of the first plants to appear early in the spring season when the ground thaws and you will often see it in bottomlands where the ground is moist. Where I live in Pennsylvania, I almost always see false mermaid weed growing under sycamore and American elm trees in floodplain forests. The stems of this plant are delicate, flimsy, and thin. The compound leaves are divided into several leaflets, and the flowers are beautiful but tiny. So you will probably never see the flowers unless you get down on your knees. Sometimes you'll have to lie flat on your belly just to see them. Each flower is only a few millimeters across. It contains three sepals and three white petals. All of this lime green that you see around me is false mermaid weed. And it's interesting that more people don't know about this plant because I learned about its edibility early on in my foraging education. A state park environmental educator here in Pennsylvania pointed it out to me on a wildflower walk many years ago. And he talked about its edible uses. And I thought to myself, if he's talking about this plant publicly, then surely more foragers know about this plant. But as the years went on, and as I read through foraging literature and started having conversations with foragers, I realized that many people, foragers included, have no idea that this plant even exists. Now the range of false mermaid weed isn't extensive, but it's not small either. As you can see on this iNaturalist map, the plant is mostly found in the Mid-Atlantic and Great Lakes regions of Eastern North America, with a few scattered populations out west. Where I live in Pennsylvania, populations of false mermaid weed are large and dense. Sometimes the ground is covered with this plant. In other states, however, like in Minnesota, things are different. False mermaid weed is listed as a threatened species in the state of Minnesota. So the plant isn't abundant everywhere, and it's important to understand this. If you are going to forage this native plant, pay attention to population numbers in your local area. Look for really dense patches. It's not a good idea to harvest the plant in areas where it's rare, threatened, or endangered. As I said earlier, this edible plant requires no special preparation. You can harvest the entire aerial portion and eat it on the spot which is what I do when I see large populations of false mermaid weed. Now you're probably wondering, how does it taste? Well, it's mild, <clears throat> which is why it requires no special preparation. And after a few seconds of chewing, you will detect a slight peppery flavor in your mouth. So it's somewhat spicy, but the spiciness isn't always apparent and it doesn't really linger in your mouth for too long. If you've ever had radish sprouts, it kind of tastes like radish sprouts, only milder, but it definitely has the texture and the juiciness of fresh sprouts. Now there's another taste in there that I can't quite put words to, so I'll say it's the taste of false mermaid weed mixed with a bit of spiciness. Earlier, I mentioned spring beauty and trout lily. Both of these plants are similar to false mermaid weed in that they are spring ephemerals. Spring ephemerals are plants that grow during a short window of time when certain conditions are available. Such conditions include lots of light, water, and nutrients. During this window of time, from snowmelt until the canopy fills in with leaves, so late winter through spring, these plants complete their above ground life cycles. When the forest canopy fills in with leaves, most of these plants, including false mermaid weed, senesce. Now the vast majority of spring ephemerals in North America are long-lived herbaceous perennials. So spring beauty, trout lily, and most other spring ephemerals allocate their resources to sexual reproduction and to underground storage structures and sometimes to clonal growth. Annual spring ephemerals are much less common in North America. 
False mermaid weed is one of our few annual spring ephemeral wildflowers. As an annual, it doesn't allocate resources to clonal growth or to underground storage structures. It invests its reproductive energy into seed production. So it has to produce viable seeds before summer arrives in order for the next generation to succeed. This plant might be one you've been stepping on all these years in your pursuit of bigger and flashier things. But I hope that after watching this video, you've gained an appreciation for the less conspicuous among us. Sometimes the less conspicuous among us have pretty cool names, tiny wildflowers, interesting life strategies, and edible uses. When they do, it's worth paying attention to them and wondering, what else have we been stepping on all these years? Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel and to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video.